Hey, what's up everybody? Dornell Dana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. I am your host and I'm super stoked about our interview today with the one, the only, Kira Truitt. You're about to hear the real deal story from her own lips, her own heart of how she Initially, we thought she quintupled her income, but she actually six exited. I don't know how to say that in the quintupled rendition, like six upled. I, I don't know how to do that. I went to public school, but basically, she got to bona fide qualified badass status within four months. She six extra income from 4K a month paying bills in survival mode to 28K this month within four months without the hell of cold calling, chasing, begging, bribing, or kissing ass. How badass is that? That's a special kind of badass if you ask me. So super stoked to have you on the show, Kira, and thank you for being here to share your story. Yeah, I'm happy to be here and honored, honestly. <laughs> well, it's an honor to be part of your breakthrough and to uh, be part of such an avalanche of awesome in such a short period of time. Six Xing your income in four months. It's like, you know, we say it and it's reality and it's your current reality, but even saying it's like, seriously, most people don't even do that in a decade, let alone in four months. I mean, most people have a hard time just making double digit growth within a year. You're doing like six X exponential growth within four months. It's, it's mind blowing. It really is. And so our audience they're I'm sure chomping at the bit, just like I, I am, how the heck did you do it? We're not going to share that just yet though. Why don't you start off by telling a little bit about your backstory? Um, where do you reside? How long you've been in the business? And what inspired you to get into this crazy business to begin with? Why don't we start there? All right. Yeah. Well, I'm currently in the Seattle areas in Washington State and absolutely loving it. That awesome. I've been in the business for technically three and a half years, but I have done several different positions within that. Um, so whether I did like a loan officer assistant, I sort of did on my own. I was an inside sales consultant for the first four or five months. Um, and then I've only like really gone out on my own in the last, like since November. So matter of months, really. That so I you, got to, you got lots of, lots of references for all the different, uh, hats that people can wear in the mortgage space from being inside sales to processing to all the minutia to now 100% commission you eat what you kill as a loan officer. Uh, so that gives you a reference for all that goes on within a mortgage company, I'm sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I've got a note. <laughs> and, and a reference for the joys of paperwork and uh, chasing people around for docs and the joys of being in a call center or making outbound calls all day, right? Oh, yeah, that was awful. <laughs> Never, ever again, please. Um, right? Sometimes we need to have an experience for what we don't like so we can have a heightened appreciation for what we do like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I definitely experimented with every single thing I don't want to do again. <laughs> and that's what and so, so what inspired you? What inspired you to, mm -hmm. to get into the mortgage space to begin with? And then like, why, why the loan officer role? Uh, yeah. Well, that, that story starts way back in 2007, actually, whenever I started as a real estate agent in August of 2007. And okay. uh, yeah, that was a, not a great time to become a real estate agent, for sure. My very first day, I'm walking <laughs> in all excited and everyone else is walking out with boxes. Uh, What's that was going the on there? Finished first Mortgage finished meltdown, year. right? Literally. Yes. That was mm -hmm. everybody lost their job on the bottom floor of that particular building that day. <laughs> What did I just get my and here in? you are and here you are getting your job at the same time right yeah for that I mean it's different job with the real estate side um, and that was interesting all by itself I think I was huge to be able to be immersed in that world to like know all of these parts about it and you know I did that for a couple of years enough to at least learn what what it's like to be on a full commission type of basis and also to learn what I didn't want to do which was negotiating short sales anymore right. um, 
ended up leaving. I actually did that for about three years. Um, ended up leaving to go be a bridal. I ran a bridal salon for a while as well. Um, so a different kind of sales entirely, but they're the ones that moved me up to Seattle from Tucson, Arizona. So definitely a totally different world up here. Um, and when I decided I no longer wanted to do the crazy rat race that is retail and the crazy hours, like 60 hours minimum required for management, I'm like, good Lord, I've got a small baby at home. I don't want to do that anymore. No, <laughs> um, that's no life. So, yeah, no, I ooh, don't. I, this is hard. Went and kind of yeah. put out, I landed in loan officering. <laughs> um, I'm going to say I was led there, honestly. Like I put out applications in all sorts of areas that were basically within real estate. So title companies, escrow, um, and happened to get a interview with this loan company um, for inside sales agent where they actually just had you make calls. And if you could get a refinance on the phone ready to go on that first day, then you were hired. You're so, hired. Well, that's a great way to, to cut your teeth and to see if you're the real deal all in one shot. Yeah. Well, that was, it worked out for me, obviously. <laughs> I did get some really nice gentleman that uh, was interested in getting a refinance. And I truly believe that that was God given because that I was not actually as good at that job as I would like to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done okay. Like looking back, it, you know, I would have gotten probably a similar one deal a month or so, but been really grinding. That's truly what that one was, was such a grind because we were making 150 cold calls every single day. Yeah, that's definitely a grind. It is full <laughs> Obviously, your calling wasn't cold calling all day. You know, you were kind of like the proverbial eagle scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens, knowing you're called for more than that, that you have these big wings for more than that. So you weren't meant to stay in a chicken yard for long. <laughs> no, no. I was seeing all the people that we were handing off these beautiful leads to and being like, nope, that that's the place I want to be. Um, follow so, I mean, the beauty. Follow the beauty. That's the good rule of thumb. Follow the beautiful leads. Well, yeah. <laughs> Wherever they go, follow them. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much immediately started studying for that license, signed up for the classes, got that all set up, um, took the test, nailed it, by the way. I'm just going to throw that out there. Definitely oh, got yeah. it. Kick ass Kira. We don't call you kick ass Kira for nothing. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, no. So that was great. And then um, just basically was where I was hounding friends. Like, honestly, my very first loan that I got was from a friend. It was a jumbo loan. Um, brought it into my office all very excited, but we did refis and they were like, mm, no, you're going to have to give that away. Hell no. There's some <laughs> juicy commission up in here. No, How about no. I sign up for being a loan officer? <laughs> no, I'm, like, I'm going to take this beautiful loan and send right. it away. I, I did not yeah. step foot in that office again, to be entirely Same honest. people don't do that. Yeah, that's no, not that a same choice. Crazy. Um, so I got on with a totally different place. And I started trying to do the loan officer thing completely on my own, just hounding friends um, and convincing them they all want to buy a house. But that can only go so far. <laughs> and all I was right. very pregnant, by the way. That's probably part of this beautiful story. Eventually, eventually you run out of friends. You end up being in the no friends left club if you keep trying to milk them for their loans, right? A little bit. <laughs> and I had, then I had a baby and I had the maternity leave and time for that. And then kind of getting back into it was like, ah, we're starting over again. It's how it felt. So I ended up going in and being a loan officer assistant for another top producing loan officer in the area um, and got to learn uh, everything there is to know, I feel like, about originating loans and doing like the paperwork and the literal like day to day type of stuff. Um, but right. then again, still see like, okay, great, now I do all of these things, but like I, I, the money is over there and I'm going to go over there. <laughs> right. I'm building someone else's dream, not my own dream. Absolutely. And not feeling appreciated for it either. It's so right. Oh, yeah. whoosh, whoosh, crack the whip, work longer and harder, get those loans done. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I got out of this to stop working 60 hours a week. <laughs> right, here I am. How did I get back here? Uh, yeah, a little bit. So decided that I'm going to branch off on my own and join this beautiful company at Fairway. I'm a big fan and uh, been doing Love been it. here since November. And now I'm kicking ass. <laughs> you certainly are. You're living up to your name, kick-ass Kira. And <laughs> obviously the results are testimony to that. You know, six Xing your business in four months is nothing to shake a stick at. That's nothing short of extraordinary. That's the dust <laughs> on top of extraordinary. That's what I call off the chain freaking awesome, if you ask me. Uh, but, you know, 
let's talk about what what life was like before landing on Planet Prosper with Doran Aldana. I know it's it's probably feels like a different a different life, and it certainly was. And four months, tons has changed in four months. Tons has changed in two months. But <laughs> I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you to bring yourself back, do a time lapse in the time machine, and go back to the time in the dark when you were suffering and struggling and spinning your wheels and banging your head against the wall, and you know you didn't know what to do to fix it all you knew is there was a serious problem here and it wasn't fun what was that like on a day-to-day -day basis for you um before you got with me what was the most painful part for you in, in living in that day-to-day -day? spinning your wheels it's a really good metaphor for it honestly mm. coming coming into work working 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 the hours, I mean, I was in the office constantly doing something. I am very good at finding something to do. You will absolutely feel what time is available. Um, but whether those were productive hours is a totally different Yeah, thing. big difference, <laughs> big difference between activity and productivity. No doubt about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that was basically kind of what it was. I was trying things and not being like, I was trying to be consistent about it. I was taking, programs that I had used in the past and, you know, trying to continue that into the future. And honestly, I was never getting great results from that to begin with. And I just kind of kept doing it because that's what I knew to do. So you didn't know I anything knew, else, right? You didn't know what you didn't know. Yeah. I was like, I was, I'm doing all the things. What's going on? <laughs> well, right? I'm doing all the things except not the right things <laughs> or the productive yeah. things. So, so you're putting in the time, you're putting in the energy, you're putting in the effort and you're grinding it out. I call it grinding through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet, you know, trudging through, trudging through, but it's heavy and it's hard and it's toil and it's blood and it's sweat and it's tears. And so for you, what was the most potently painful part of that problem for you as you were living in it? Well, I was beginning to feel again, like I, this is not why I got here. Like I kept making mm. these decisions so that I could be with my family and I'm finding myself not with my family at all and still not making any money. Well, it's money, but not enough. <laughs> not what Survi I was like, Survival yeah. mode money, right? For survival, exactly. Like literally, and then being stressed each time, like I would get home if one deal started to go just any anything out of you know, I, the line that I had set in the sand, um, then it was super stressed. And so I'm going home and I'm definitely bringing that home to my husband and to my kids. And so then they're not enjoying my presence as much as I right. <laughs> like to believe. Showing your fangs a little more than you like perhaps? Yeah, because it's stressful, it's hard, it's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> definitely go those cement blocks. Oh, ah. Yeah, that's Thank no you. way to live. Yeah. And no. <laughs> so you were living in that for a while. I think as far as I recollect, you kind of got into the loan officer, 100% commission, you eat what you kill, no safety net space in November of last year, right? Roughly, yeah. Yeah. And then um, we linked up, I think it was in March. Yeah. So you you had a, you started in March. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you know we had a good three four months of you uh, grinding it out, doing it the hard way, and feeling the pain and the strain and the suffering of that on a daily basis. What was if we were to kind of connect with your heart and read your mind at the time that you were really kind of at your wits end with all this before we linked up. What was really at stake if you didn't get this fixed? Like what was the the most potently painful consequence for you if you didn't get this fixed? That for you was the most foreboding part of this problem persisting and you know having this precipice of failure approaching you day by day by day. Tell us about that. Well, that, definitely that stress was a big one um, and bringing that home and really it impacting like all of all of my relationships at that point, because I my brain is somewhere else <laughs> for sure. And that just in and of itself, like and feeling that stress and then bringing that home and then snapping at people whenever it wasn't their fault. Like I, the, you know, there were probably some relationships that might have been on the line. Um, mm. It was not 
it was not sustainable. It was not how I was envisioning my life. And so definitely I was feeling upset about that too. And if I wasn't doing enough, maybe if I could do more then I can change, I don't know if, what more can I do? Like it's just constant Mm. give, 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 give. And like, you get to a point where you're just like, I, I have nothing left. (laughs) I am. And and what (laughs) I'm doing the things that I want to do and not feeling like it's going anywhere. And so then what, what's the point of staying in this? I, I came here for a reason. I came to be in a loan officer for a reason. I can go back and sell wedding gowns and work 60 hours a week and make just as much money. And at least then I know that it's coming. And so maybe or I would have some peace. I was, I was really searching for peace. Yeah. So you, you got in the business because obviously you saw upside potential and income freedom, flexibility, the ability to give your, your family and your kids a better life, to be able to be at the dance recitals and the ball games and to be mommy on deck and to be a present mommy um, and a prosperous mommy. And now you're in the trenches and you realize it's not really all that it was cracked up to be. And it's not exactly happening how you anticipated. And you're stressing out about you know, getting these deals done and the bills keep piling up and you're grinding and you're putting in all these hours and you're busting your buns. And uh, at the end of the month, there's, you know, uh, a lot less in the account than you had hoped. And uh, the expenses are a lot higher than you anticipated. You're showing your fangs, perhaps with the hubby and the kids a little more than you'd like. And there's a sense of burnout. And then there's also the sense of urgency that you need to get this fixed because you, you know you didn't sign up for this to make peanuts and you know you have other options yeah. and every month goes by every week that goes by doing it the hard way like you've been doing it you're heading towards a precipice of having to admit failure stick your tail between your legs give up on your dream and go build someone else's dream and deep down inside you knew that just was on freaking unacceptable because you felt there was a call in your life or a call in in, in in uh, a passion for the business. Is that right? I did, nailed it. <laughs> yeah, like there's a calling there. Yeah, but like you I. Weren't, you, you weren't cashing in on your calling at that point, were you? God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that, there's that dissonance, right? That frustration dissonance that a lot of people in this business suffer in, where they know they're called for more, they know they got in this business for more, they know that they're capable of more, and yet, it's not landing in their world. And all they're seeing is spinning their wheels, stagnation, stress, sleepless nights, and suffering. And they don't know out. They don't know any way out. All they know is that what they're doing ain't freaking working and they need to get it fixed. Yeah. So yeah. that all culminated into us linking up. There are no accidents. Uh, no. Uh, paths cross for a purpose. And I, div- I believe wholeheartedly that it was divine orchestration that our paths crossed. And you got on a breakthrough call with one of my consultants and it got real pretty quick around what it, you know, what's at stake if you don't get this thing fixed. Tell me about before we get into what happened after you pulled the trigger and landed on Planet Prosper. Tell me about things you had tried in the past that we're actually perpetuating the problem, different strategies, different approaches that just straight up weren't working for you. Well, that 150 cold calls is right out. <laughs> <laughs> right. You telling me 150 cold calls a day isn't putting an avalanche of awesome in your bank account. Come on. Now. <laughs> I, you know, it's only as good as the leads you're getting. And <laughs> they weren't great. Right. Um, yeah, so that and typically cool. cold calling is definitely doing it the hard way. Nine times yeah. out of 10 literally you might as well just open up a phone book which is what they told me to do at real estate school yeah come Um, on you know get to it and do it pick up the phone book pick up your phone and go get them tiger good luck (laughs) (laughs) you'll need it (laughs) yeah for sure yeah um also i mean long proponent and i still am not abandoning this but brian buffini has a whole thing on you know working your referrals and uh it's just i had been working them I got all my friends a house and we can only refinance them so much when the market wasn't go- when the market was going up. So I right. kind of took that out. So again, it's only as good as the people in your database and expanding that. And I knew that I desperately needed some influx of new people in said database. 
Um, the other one that I had called, I should have looked up the name. Um, it's that one where you call 40 realtors every Monday morning, though, and then all of your... I'm sure no one has any clue which one you're talking about, but we'll leave them unsaid. You can read between the lines. But uh, you're telling me calling the same 40 realtors every Monday didn't get them jacked and stacked about wanting to meet with you? How could that be? Especially considering you had such a compelling, unique value proposition, which is, hey, how's it going? Got any leads for me? <laughs> I can close a long one time. Uh, how could that not work, right? How could that not work? <laughs> you got three other calls today from the low monsters in my office? Right? Oh. Yeah. You mean yeah. I'm the fifth one who's called you at nine o'clock with the same pitch with zero unique value to bring to the table and you're telling me you don't want to meet with me? What the frick is wrong with you? Right? <laughs> I'm to pick up the phone. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're lucky if they even pick up the phone, right? It's like after the fifth one, they're like, why would I bother picking up the phone? I know if they're calling at nine o'clock, it's going to be one of those disciples from that program, right? Uh-huh. And you just uh-huh. keep calling until you have 40 conversations, by the way. You're not done at just calling the first 40 realtors. You keep going until you have 40 conversations. You're praying they pick up. Otherwise, you're making 150 cold calls a day again. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then you're going to track every single one of them on your little call logger because that uh-huh. that's what you need to do, you know, track your work and work your track. Um, and so obviously that didn't work as uh, you had hoped. I, mean, not uh, I can't imagine I why. As I maybe should have been because after doing it for a week or two and like, oh, oh no, I have to call the same ones again. Right. Um, and, oh, and I'm using the same script. I, yeah. I'm sure they just can't wait to hear about all the compelling reasons why they need to meet with me since it's the same thing I talked to them last week that didn't work last week. But maybe this week, just by sheer resistance and persistence, they'll give in. It'll be the sympathy close, right? Like, hey, tell you what, we'll make a deal. If you meet with me, I'll stop calling you every freaking Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, except that's not what I, I'm going to call you again next right. um, but, or, or how about you give me my, your harder deals? Oh, someone else couldn't make it? I'll take the harder, harder ones. Like, oh, because I don't have enough right. to do. I'll right. take your crap leads that no one in the whole freaking oh. universe has the opportunity to get done because they have zero income. They have credit of 250 if that's even possible. They have no <laughs> down payment, and they're still living with, living with mama at age 42. I'll take mm-hmm. that deal. Right. Give me that deal. I'll, I'll see if I can resurrect the dead. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. we do. <laughs> but yeah, right? no. we, we do, but we do it in a much more lucrative way as we're about to talk about in a moment. Yeah. So, so obviously, I mean, we're being facetious and we're, you know, having some fun with this, but obviously that didn't work. And that was if you're committed to it. And that's the way that you want to, then it could be fine. But that wasn't the way for me. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, some people that works, but let's be real. It works better than doing nothing because if you do nothing, nothing's going to happen. You know, if you throw enough yogurt to the fan, eventually something's going to stick, right? Yeah. And that's pretty much what I call it. I call it the yogurt to the fan program where you just call 40 realtors every Monday, throw yogurt at the fan and hope something sticks. I call that working hard, not working smart. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a strong proponent of working longer and harder for my money. I mean, as last I checked, there's no brownie points or bonus points at the bank for doing it the hard way. You know, you don't go to the teller and say, hey, you get a a big smiley face sticker and a trip to Puerto Vallarta because you worked long and hard for that money. I mean, that just doesn't happen. There's no brownie points, right? (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) So why sign up for doing it the hard way? But nonetheless, so many people, unfortunately, just don't know what they don't know. And that was the place you were in. You just didn't know any better. So you're doing the best best you can with what you knew at the time. So you tried cold calling, you tried the 40 realtors every Monday, and obviously that didn't work at the level you needed to. That's why you reached out to us for help. And that's a common reason, by the way, for people to reach out to us is because what they're doing ain't working. And they know if they just keep doing what they've always been doing, they're gonna keep getting what they've always been getting. And that ain't freaking, uh, you know, something they're willing to settle for another day. So that's why they reach out for help. And that was you. So you reached out for help. You got on a call and the rest is history. You pulled the trigger. (laughs) Tell me about, tell me about what skepticism you had either before pulling the trigger or after after pulling the trigger and making that bold, intelligent, strategic investment in your breakthrough um, that 
was kind of, if we're really honest with ourselves, was kind of a very human experience when you enter the unknown. There's a lot of skepticism and resignation and hesitancy. Tell us about that, either before you pulled the trigger or after you pulled the trigger. What kind of skepticism did you have as you launched into this unknown realm called Planet Prosper? <laughs> well, I would say before I was pretty committed. I had, honestly, in my an hour's meditation, I had been, I, I had decided, I had been told, however you want to think about that, that um, I needed help and like pretty much like the next thing, pull out my phone eventually and like, oh, hey. So I'm gonna say that that was some intervention on that one. And so signing up for it wasn't really the skeptical part for me. It was just like, wait, so what do you want? I, but I thought I was trying to get up to $10,000 a month and was gonna be excited and stoked about that. By the end of the call, it was like 20 or die. So right. that by itself was expansive. <laughs> it's like, oh. If you're gonna well, think, it's, it's, if you're gonna it's, think, you might as well think bigger, right? Right? Yeah. It's like, and I wasn't as attached to this number. I mean, this number was great. And I would have been, I thought I would have been excited about it. But like, looking back, that wasn't exciting enough for me, I guess. So I think <laughs> deciding to double that was, and that made it like, I don't know, uh, made the cost for the program seem insignificant in comparison. It's like, well, I'm about to be making 20000 a month. So like, what's this? Exactly. <laughs> Chump change Maybe in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, making decisions from who I'm going to be, not where I am at this exact moment. Um, That's huge. As I learned going through it, but looking back, that is my my light bulb of like, ah, oh, yes, that. Um, when I That's just started, huge, by the way. That just what you said there, <laughs> making the decision from what you're committed to versus where you're at now, thinking from your goals versus of your goals. Right. Most people think of their goals, like I want to make 10k a month or 20k a month, but champions think from their goals they ask themselves what would the person who's making the kind of money that i want to be making making 20 30 40 50 80 100k plus per month what would that person do in this situation what kind of decision would that person make and that's precisely what you did and here we are four months later and you've six x your income in four months i mean it's freaking crazy so sorry, sorry to interject. Because this goes back to my hesitancy or my skeptical. Okay, go right. into the program and I'm all in. Um, but I very much, very much wanted to understand every single part of it. So watch the modules multiple times, went through all of the steps and things, but didn't end up launching the um, the actual realtor attraction campaign. Like I set up everything in advance first and like tried to really get it and didn't actually send that out until like I was almost done with the program. <laughs> so we say four months, but I probably procrastinated, like while I, I was doing things and I was setting up a new CRM and doing additional things that were all very productive things. Yeah. I didn't do the one most productive thing until like the very end when I was like, okay, fine, I have to do it. And honestly, I sent it out and I forgot to hit unpause from the program. So I was like, right. no one's responding. <laughs> Oh my God. So no one good. likes me. I oh, suck. I knew this God. wasn't going to work. I can't believe any of this. And oh my God. I didn't, and then I went into the program. I was like, I'll just see if it was even opened any. Oh. I, <laughs> I forgot to unpause it. <laughs> and I and did then, get it. And then you start getting like lit up like minute. a light bulb. Yeah. Right? Oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I launched two campaigns, just hit the button on two different ones at the same time, which I do not recommend doing because my phone blew up. Um, and just trying to keep track of, okay, oh, this is for the, what we call our Lazarus campaign. And this one's from this one and like trying to respond to everybody appropriately, like maybe wait an hour between the two. <laughs> right, or maybe a day or two. Yeah, but yeah, of course, quick ask Kira, she's all over it, right? Screw it, let's I, do it all in. I mean, I had already started the campaign and it wasn't working. So what's the big deal about pushing this one last button? Exactly, might as well just, so. might as well see if I can get some affirmation and have someone like me, right? <laughs> yeah, well, the te testimonial engine man, big fan of that. Oh, someone else likes me, oh. <laughs> Right, no need for Prozac that day. That's always a good day. Mm, I love that one. <laughs> so we got testimonial engine rocking. We got the Lazarus <laughs> campaign. We'll talk about that in a moment, resurrecting the dead. Uh, you got the realtor attraction campaign rocking. So tell me, tell, tell me about this, this uh, realtor attraction campaign. You load these top producing realtors and 
uh, then you got to do a bunch of cold calling and call them every Monday or did it happen a little different than that? Yeah, no, it was a little bit easier than that one. Um, so I'm not sure how tell much us in contrast. Tell us, <laughs> tell us in contrast. What was the what was the refreshing change? I'm curious. Uh, well, not having to make the initial contact at all. That was absolutely huge. That like, all right, it feels less personal. Like I'm not getting rejected. I just contacted 100 people in like in five minutes. So like, you know. If you're wanting to work with me, I'm here. If you don't, so what? I've got, what's next? I've got the next ones coming in, literally. Right. right so. The opposite of scarcity, abundance. Oh, you're not interested? Well, you just disqualified yourself. Next, someone's waiting. Yeah, right? Like, oh, I could refer you to someone in my office. Whatever, I probably already contacted them. <laughs> <laughs> if there's someone worth meeting with, I already have them on my list. Exactly. And I didn't even do, like, I see, I still have work, homework to do. I didn't even do the entire hundred. I did, I think it ended up being like 40 something. Um, Cause I was so scary. How many, how, many appointments <laughs> were, how many appointments were you able to uh, schedule and have you done any of those meetings yet? And if so, right. what's transpired from those meetings so far? I'm curious. Oh my goodness. Um, well, I've got, got a few people I'm still working on. Okay, so we had at least six meetings um, that I kind of gone or worked with people. I had a few phone conversations as well and kind of weeded them out without even meeting for coffee because like they were wanting open houses exclusively and that's not part of my business plan because I've got right. such and that's why I went into this business was to not do open houses. Um, so we kind of, I kind of tried to work them out that way in advance um, before actually spending my time in meeting for coffee. And things. Perfect. So notice guys, she's <laughs> interviewing them, not the other way around. She has clarity and confidence and commitment in what she wants her business to look like and what kind of partners align with that image and that vision. And so she's sifting and sorting. She's weeding through all the gravel to find the gold nuggets. She's not needing anyone. She's <laughs> looking for the people who align with her vision for herself and her business and is not settling, period. Notice the difference in perspective and posture in positioning versus coming with neediness, needing oh. alone, needing <laughs> affirmation, needing someone to say yes to your proposition. Screw fricking that. That's called doing it the hard way. That's coming from lack and limitation and scarcity. We don't roll with that kind of mindset on Planet Prosper. You come with power. You come with the posture that they need you more than you need them. Anything less is doing it the hard way. We're flipping the script. Yeah. Right? yeah. And that was huge too, because I definitely before I would have gone into him and been like, oh, please, oh, please work with me. Oh, no, I can send me a referral. <laughs> send me a lead. Right. Um, you know, every Friday, every Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, you know that tune. That yeah, tune, is, that tune is a great way to go broke. Yeah. This time I was able to, one, I mean, I had the time. I did spend a lot of time figuring out everything in advance of like had clarity of what it is that I did want for my business. Um, so when I was talking with them, I could find out if it was a fit. Um, if they're going to be super needy, then that's probably not going to be the person for me. Not that I'm not willing to help and train for somebody that has got a lot of passion for it as well. I'll take on a new person if they're the right person. Um, but we're definitely after those that have been doing this for a while are ready to make commitments and able to spend money if it's needed to be spent or to spend money there. I don't want commission breath. I don't want to have it. I don't want agents to have it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't want to be working with the bottom feeding, jelly donut eating, groveling, whining, sniveling, complaining, do, uh, low producing realtors. You want to be rocking with the champions, the winners, the superstars, the rock stars, and not the prima donnas who, who think their shit doesn't stink. Let's not get things twisted. Awesome. Right. <laughs> we want to work with the humble yet successful who are fun, coachable, committed who so are energy givers, right? They're energy givers, not energy takers. And we're not rolling with the low producers who are selling the trailer park listings. You know, that's not who we're working <laughs> oh with. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> if I'm gonna spend the same amount of time, I'd rather that be a 4K higher, maybe three, that'd be fine. <laughs> right? Yeah, not so tell us about, you've done these six meetings. Tell us about what's culminated from that. Any solid partners from that yet? I'm sorry, I've at least two solid partners that are additional from that one that I'm feeling really like that we're really jiving. So that's great. Um, some of the awesome. others, just like, you know, maybe weren't doing quite the production that we were thinking because they were on teams and then words and we're still working. But like I would say two sure. that are 
that. And again, I didn't do the entire one and I still massively increased my income from it. Um, Absolutely. Less is more, my friends. What would you rather do? Try to herd a bunch of cats and push soggy noodles up hills? And, <laughs> the few don't drag the masses is one of the things you said in our one. I'm like, so many of your quotes. I see progress right. and perfection. I will not enable mediocrity. Uh, <laughs> I love it. With your quotes here. <laughs> this is why you're kicking ass because you're like a sponge and you're coachable and you're applying the coaching. It's not just going in one ear and out the, out the other. You're actually applying it to your life and your business. And that's why you're getting such phenomenal results. <laughs> so that's why you're such a delight to work with and and uh that's that's why i do what i do and it's really cool because you can lead a horse to water but you can't force it to drink, drink right? <laughs> that's, why we, and that's why we only work with thirsty horses and you my dear are mm -hmm. a thirsty horse and that's why you're kicking ass among other things oh, so yeah. we're looking for thirsty horses with your team and your partners and just by virtue of having two solid partners your income has been blowing up like unbelievable exponential growth over the last four months. Uh, yeah, I just want to offer the agents that I was working with and was do had really good relationships with and have been able to, you know, massively increase their leads as well. So yeah, so it's <laughs> adding value to existing partners and then it's attracting the right new partners. And there's a lot that goes into attracting the right partners because it's real easy to attract drama queens if you let them be drama queens and if you enable that and if you'll sell for that. Um, because let's be real, it's real easy to see them as dollar signs and uh, seeing them as uh, future paychecks and settling in the present with drama and trauma and justifying it because you quote unquote need the income or you need the deals or you need a fuller pipeline. And that's how we enable mediocrity and a whole lot of trouble and struggle and suffering because we adopt the scarcity frame where we say we need their business as opposed to saying screw freaking that I am swimming in an ocean of abundance. I can have it exactly the way I want it if I don't settle. And if I continue to remain faithful to the image of the dream business that I continue to give thanks for in advance. And you've been an amazing student at applying that and building that mindset muscle over the last four months. Another reason why you've been kicking ass, taking names and chewing bubble gum. <laughs> oh man, the mindset one. <laughs> That's huge. <All> right? <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us about how you've built up your mindset muscle over the last four months. Maybe not like all the juicy stuff, but maybe for just to quench the curiosity a little bit for our audience. What are some of the things you've been doing behind the scenes to own a self image of someone who is capable and worthy of making a quarter million, a half a million a year? Someone who owns a self identity of being a winner, a champion, a dream achiever, a goal crusher. Tell us about that. <laughs> uh, well, literally all starts in the morning. Uh, every, the, my morning routine has changed fairly drastically since starting this whole program. Um, an additional book, books that I've been reading that has definitely been emphasizing already what you've been saying. So it's just, it's just changed. So the learn and burn, I want to say since I started your program, I've read about 11 books. Um, oh. And they're just like listening to them and repeating some of them as well. Um, but then you see this, okay, now this has a similarity to this. And it's like, well, okay, now I've got so many of these past you know, about all these authors that are all corroborating what Doran's telling me. <laughs> it's not just crazy, dumbass Doran saying it. It's other people no, too. It's, he must yeah, not be as crazy as I thought, right? <laughs> um, so that part I think is really huge. Um, having some yeah, of that the morning morning, checking my email when I wake up in the morning. And I'm also not checking it before I go to bed because I don't, that, that's a great way to increase anxiety if something is going wrong. Yeah, um, it's a great way to kill some sleep. Anyway. Yeah, like focus, focus on business when it's business time and focus on home whenever it's at home time and having those boundaries I think is really important. Um, the morning that I'm gonna go off or be excited about it, but those cold showers are really helpful. <laughs> you are crazy, aren't you? Taking a cold shower. Who takes a cold shower? What are we, masochists or what? Who the heck takes a cold shower? Oh uh, yeah, I first time I heard you guys talking about that on the uh, Q and A call. I'm like, oh my god, that sounds miserable. I want nothing to do with this. And literally by the second time, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll try that. 
<laughs> because do I don't it, let's do it. Out. What if it's that's the one key that was the difference between making millions and make, and staying where I'm at? Well, I can take a cold shower every morning. That's hey. fine. That's fine. <laughs> you want to if you want to win, you can't afford to be a wimp and take warm showers. Come on now. So again, another testament to your defiant commitment to showing up coachable, resourceful, decisive, and committed. I mean, you're just showing up being malleable, being malleable <laughs> in the hands of your coaches so you can get the best from the program and become the best version of yourself. And you've been a, a real poster child uh, for our program by virtue of your malleability, your coachability, your commitment. So that's really been amazing to wa watch and witness you blossom and bloom into a bigger, better, richer version of yourself over the last four months. Hey. So speaking of richer, tell me about results. You started out your, tell us, you know, the kind of results you're getting before the program. Tell us about the kind of results you're getting now, just four months later. <laughs> well, before I would have one, maybe two loans in a month and, you know, cons consistent enough. I was making the bills, ma making ends meet mostly. Right. <laughs> um, Most of the time. Yeah. Right. And then now, I mean, having closing six this month is Woo! incredible. Right. Three X, baby, and bigger, juicier loans too. I'm assuming, if yeah. Uh, if your commissions are as big as I know they are this month, <laughs> the um, and one of them was the, one of the Facebook leads that pretty much paid for my coaching in its entirety. So, like, a hey. nice. <laughs> one loan, baby, one loan, one among many. Yeah, right. I'm just learning in general, like how some of those online leads and stuff work too. It's like, all right, so now I so much more knowledge. So I'll be doing more of that for sure. Um, and in, in going into the future actually. So that's an exciting, like entire side of my business that I am super stoked about. And yeah, I don't know what can we tell you about that other than it's great. It's much better on this side. <laughs> no doubt. It's much better. And the air is much fresher and the view is much more pristine, captivating and inspiring when you're at the top, as opposed to in the dark valley of struggle and suffering and spinning the wheels and doing it the hard way. Planet Prosper is definitely where it's at. You never, never want to go back. Once you crawl out of the dark cave and doing it the hard way and you come into the radiant light of doing it the smart way, you never want to crawl back into that dark, cold cave. We're <laughs> commissions more on this planet now, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And so you told me off um, camera and off mic before we started this recording. Um, initially, you thought you're going to be making 20k this month, but you retabulated, recalculated, and if my recollection is accurate, now it's 28k. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. 28K. So you're averaging around three, 4K before you got in the program. This month you're doing 28K. That is off the chain. Awesome. How great does that feel? Oh my God. Amazing. And something that I've always known I could do, and yet it would end up being easier than I ever thought possible. Like I always figured, oh, if I have that many loans, I'm going to be really stressed out. It's going to be hard. I'm going to, so I don't know. It's going to be hard. <laughs> it's going to be hard. That's what All I right. had it's completely in my brain. And you know, it's been just as easy to close this many as it was to close two before. So why, why would I ever want to go back again? <laughs> yeah. And chances are even easier because you're more capable, you're more confident, you're attracting better quality clients that are mm -hmm. probably easier to process and get the deals done. They're probably more compliant because your <laughs> leadership and your influence is more, insp more inspiring, more compelling and more clear to them. Mm -hmm. And you're doing the mindset work, so you're not adding unnecessary suffering to the process like you used to, right? <laughs> that, so, I mean, that, man. <laughs> so it's funny how you can stress and you can imagine the worst case possible scenario, and you can really like get your head completely worked up. And what's going to happen is going to happen no matter what. So why why put yourself through all of that? Like I can have anxiety filled time, or I can choose to not and believe that everything's always working out for me because it is. <laughs> And, and if not, I've got the resources to fix it. That's the best you can hope for, right? Is having the resources and deal with it when it comes up, but don't cause problems for yourself in advance. Um, and that is all by itself. Like that's worth the cost of admission, getting to this position to be like, you know, we'll deal with it. And also whenever I did have something going sideways, um, being able to talk to the agents and being like, okay, listen up. This is how this is going to go. This is how you two are going to fix this. Thank you. Call me when it's finished. <laughs> That's called finished. leadership right there. 
That's called right. empowering as opposed to micromanaging. That's called being the rising tide that raises the boats as a leader of the team, mm -hmm. not taking what you can get and hoping someone throws you a bone. Yeah, or hoping that they're gonna offer the solution when it's like, I already know the solution. We're we're not letting this whole thing fall apart for this minuscule repair. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It ain't gonna happen. Not on <laughs> my watch. Yeah. Time to raise the standards like yesterday. Let's do this. Yeah. Right. So, that, so that's that, awesome. <laughs> Another testament to good old Benny Franklin's quote uh being true that for the best return on your money, take your purse and pour it into your head because it allows you to become a better version of yourself. This is my addition to it, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, it, it allows you to become a better version of yourself. You build up that muscle, that leadership, that acumen, that sophistication, that skill, and no one can take it away from you. Now you have it for the rest of your career. Now you've got that marketing superpower, that mindset leadership superpower for the rest of your career. I mean, yeah. how magnificent is that to just take that in, that you have that muscle now? Oh, that's incredible. And yeah. I can't even say anything about it. The, the entire idea is just like mind blowing compared to where it was before. I'm right. Really so grateful. tell me, tell me what's the most meaningful benefit for you? Obviously you're still getting used to the, you know, what it feels like to have the bank account, having that many zeros and commas. Um, <laughs> and you're probably still getting used to what it feels like to be walking with a cape flowing from your shoulders uh, with that pep in your step and that sparkle in your eye. But what would you say for those listening and watching is the most meaningful benefit for you in what this program has done for you? Freedom, <laughs> freedom from all of it, all of it. Um, from the grind, not having to worry that I'm ever gonna have to make 150 cold calls in a day because that's not what's gonna ever happen. Um, but I mean, having the extra zeros in the bank account opens up additional things that are freedom, that are life giving too. additional travel. It's going to be, it's going to be completely life changing for my family. Um, I'm hoping that I can put my husband out of work and send him home with the kids. <laughs> Screw that. We ain't hoping. We don't smoke the hope though. We're knowing. We're knowing. It's not a matter of if, just when. Very We're about true. to fire his boss. He's going to come yeah. home one day. You're going to have a big smile on your face. You're going to give him a big hug and kiss and say, sweetheart, it's time to call your boss and tell him you can't afford to work for him anymore. <laughs> All right. right? <laughs> your, your, your business that you've been dreaming about because that, you know, the funds are there and you can, you know, go pursue your, your dreams also, but also be home by 3.30 because our daughter's got to get picked up for the bus. So <laughs> there you go. I'm the sugar mama, so you gotta, you know. Yeah. Now you're now you're super daddy holding it down with the kidlets while I'm slaying exactly. giants. I'm, I'm eternally grateful that I have someone that would love to do that. So isn't that beautiful? Let you I slay the giants. Like mommy thing for like two weeks and was like, oh no, mm -mm, I'm, I gotta go to work. This is no. terrible. So no. kudos to all of you that have done it and enjoyed that work. You, I appreciate you more than I can say. It's hard. It's so yeah, hard. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> definitely a calling in and of itself. No doubt about it that. Is. Yeah. So I love that. I love your answer. Freedom, freedom from the stress, freedom from the suffering, freedom from the sleepless nights, freedom from uh, the ongoing minutia of grinding in your weaknesses instead of dancing in your strengths, uh, freedom from endless worry and anxiety. I mean, there's just and then, of course, you know, freedom from the limitation of having desires and then looking at the bank account and saying, Oh, can't do that. Can't do this. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so way to obliterate all those limitations and way to <laughs> set up a new normal. This is now your new normal, sweetheart. You get that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> new normal. All right, come no, on I now. This is my like, floor. Oh, possibly do this again i'm like oh of course i'm obviously gonna do that again hell yeah <laughs> yeah already this, there's, to shape up so yeah uh -huh. <laughs> yeah it's not like it's an accident you know you created this you sourced it you're the source of it uh so when you know that you're the source and the cause you don't hope that you can make this your new normal you know it's your new normal it's under your feet it's your floor it's not your ceiling yeah right oh for sure yeah it's just a, yeah, a, a new a, bigger goal thing. for next one <laughs> Absolutely. It's getting warmed up, baby. We haven't even scratched the surface of the surface. We're just scratching the surface of the surface. And that's just the beginning, not the end. We ain't done. We've just begun. You're getting me started now. So, <laughs> so what are you most excited about? Knowing that this is the beginning, knowing that 
This is now just your floor, not your ceiling. What are you most excited about moving forward? All taking everything I've learned one round, like just because I did it once doesn't mean it doesn't continue to work again. So mm -hmm. probably going through and redoing the uh, realtor attraction campaign um, and then meeting these new people. That's actually really exciting is, you know, I do get to talk to people and learn about them and make a new friend, essentially. Like I'm going to have my VIP partners are going to be my new best friends and I need a new best friend or two. Thanks. And so that's going to be really fun just to find out who that person is. <laughs> Those people. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so the relation, the relational connection, the synergy, the contribution, the collaboration, um, the impact you can make, uh, the meaningful relationships, all that's uh, certainly all stuff worthy of being excited about. Uh, beyond that, in terms of just the fruit of your labor and the freedom that opens up for you, what are you most excited about in terms of that? I'm oh, curious. well, my real fruits, my labor, I have like a new kitchen going in starting Monday, actually. Woo! Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Yeah, I wasted no time. I'm like, okay, so you're going to be here. <laughs> nice. Get that reno with oh, the island yeah. and the open concept yes. and We're everything chromed out. We're raising the ceiling in the kitchen so it matches the rest of the vaulted ceiling in the house. We're taking out popcorns and these things that I've like been dreaming about since we bought the home four years ago. I'm like, Boom, let's do it now. Like I there's no reason to wait, move it. Because <laughs> I'm making decisions from the person that's that makes this on a regular basis, not the person that was. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and what a great way to pour gasoline on the fire with your abundance mindset to think from that place of abundance versus oh shit, we better hold this for a rainy day because who knows if my business tanks and we're screwed and we have to draw upon that money as a safety net. Notice the difference in the presupposition there, the paradigm of, of, of abundance in you just saying, this is my no new normal now, 28 Gs a month, come on now, let's do this. And all of a sudden now, we're not talking about being, uh, you know, well, I don't know what the word is, uh, unprudent or, you know, lacking discernment or wisdom. Uh, we're, we're talking about, it's like Conor McGregor before he had his big fight with Floyd May Mayweather. He bought like some badass sports cars and he, he went like on a, on a spending spree in advance, not because, you know, he needed more fancy cars. He already had fancy cars, but he wanted to step into if I already won that fight and I already made my 50 million or 100 million or whatever it is, what would I do to celebrate? Well, I'm going to celebrate in advance. And sometimes doing that kind of stuff is, is not prudent and unwise. And you don't want to be, you know, overspending and putting yourself into hot water because there is something called lifestyle creep. And we do have to mitigate that to be able to build assets and have our money work hard for us uh, yeah. so that we're not having to work so hard for our money. So there's a, an important piece of that we need to balance out. But what's beautiful about this is you're doing it knowing that this is the beginning. You're seeing the pipeline. You're seeing the pipeline building. You know that now we're just going to keep going higher and higher and higher. You got the partnerships. You got the ongoing pipeline to keep filling and stoking this fire. So why not do it now? And what that's doing for you is just building even more impetus and motivation to keep it going because you're owning that abundance mindset. And is that an accurate assessment? Yeah, I mean, every time I walk in the door, like that's the first thing you see is the kitchen. And so a reminder, right. I do do this, I own this, literally. And it's real, and it's real. <laughs> it's you so see that real. every day. Impact for my family, like I, this is a way I'm able to provide for them and be able to increase and up level their living situation and mine. That like, and it's exactly what I do for our clients on an every single day. Like we're up leveling everybody's living situations. You're getting bigger, better, grander houses, or you're lowering your payment and able to help your clients out that way. And I, I wanted to participate. <laughs> I love that. You deserve every ounce of your success, Kira. I'm super proud of you. I want to honor you for your coachability, your defiant resolve and commitment to win no matter what, no matter how uncomfortable it might be, no matter how hard it might be, no matter how long it might take. And I want to honor you for being all in, not being a spectator, sitting on the stands, judging, being skeptical, having your arms crossed, thinking that won't work, but being in the game and being all in, boss the wall, 
getting yourself sweaty, getting yourself skin knees and saying, I'm in this thing and being willing to do whatever it takes. I salute you for that because that's precisely why you're winning. So keep up the great work. Super proud of you. Yay, thanks. <laughs> well, guys, if you'd like to learn more about what was the catalyst that launched Kick-Ass Kira to that next level and got her out of Planet Struggle onto Planet Prosper and got her winning with such extraordinary results, you know, from 4K a month to 28K a month in literally four months. If you'd like to learn more about the secret sauce and what it really takes to help you go from where you are to where you wanna be, I invite you to do what Kira did just four short months ago. Book a call, book a call with either me or one of my consultants. We're gonna have a real talk conversation. There's no BS happening on this call. We're getting real about where you're at, where you wanna be with a spirit of collaboration and a spirit of trust where we're in your corner on your team, serving you to your breakthrough. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, we will show you how. If we can't, we will be the first people to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you're gonna leave the call with more clarity than you've ever had in your whole freaking life when it comes to what it really takes to create your breakthrough. So if indeed you'd like to take advantage of that and you want to increase your income by at least $100,000 per year or more, and you're ambition, ambitious and you're driven and you're ready to start winning now, not someday, and you're not willing to go another freaking day doing it the hard way, book a call. We'll show you the pathway to your breakthrough. We'll get those concrete blocks off your feet and we'll show you how to win. We'll show you how to come to the gunfight with an Uzi, not a butter knife. We'll show you how to head west looking for the sunset instead of east. A lot of you guys are heading east looking for the sunset. That doesn't work so well. So I invite you guys to book a call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Uh, apply, book a call, we'll link up, and we'll help you get more clarity than you ever have before on what it's really going to help, what it's really going to take to help you guys win at the highest level. Uh, so that being said, that's all we got for today, guys. Again, I invite you to book a call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I promise you it'll be one of the best invested one hours you've invested in a very, very, very long time. Kira, what would you say to someone who's kind of sitting on the fence, who uh, has been bombarded with pitch after pitch after pitch from so-called experts and coaches? And they're they're thinking, really, I mean, Kira's store is pretty awesome, but you know, is this really worth hopping on a phone call about? I've been on these calls before. I don't want a high pressure sales pitch. Um, you know, most of these are just like, hawking crap Facebook leads and, uh, you know, doing crap I've heard of before. I don't want to waste my time. What would you say to someone like that? Uh, I didn't find the call to be a real high pressure call at all, honestly. Um, so definitely it was just lifting the hood on the business and really talking about all of the um, things that were going well and the things that weren't going well and what the goals were in general. And that part was like the call itself, I think is valuable. Um, again, it just made me decide to go from 10,000 to $20,000 just in the goal alone. So I'm going to say that is worth it to feel like you were 100% behind this new goal instead. And that was just the call. I hadn't started anything. I hadn't given them my credit card or anything. Um, so I would say that the call is worth it. Uh, the program is absolutely worth it as well. It's, more it's far more than just the facebook leads or the you know being able to hand leads to your realtors although that's amazing and it feels great to be able to do but we go so much further into it and you have additional calls with coaches that um really help with that mindset and just kind of it's life-changing just go do it <laughs> just <laughs> freaking do it like just freaking like, do it What's like the worst nike it? says exactly <laughs> what are you gonna do just keep doing it the hard way come on now don't be ridiculous. It's a better way. <laughs> Time to take those concrete blocks off your feet, get you out of the mud and get you strapping on your wings and soaring like you were God <laughs> called to do. Come on, let's get out of the mud. There's a much higher, more beautiful, more opulent, more free, more fulfilling, more fruitful plan on your life. And that's precisely why we're here to serve you to your breakthrough. But you have to be committed and you got to be ready to divorce mediocrity and divorce struggle so you can marry success, prosperity, joy, and fulfillment. 
So Kira, it's been such a pleasure. It's uh, I can't believe a whole hour has already come and gone. Normally these uh, interviews are like 45 minutes, but we had so much fun. Apparently time got away on us. This was our second call, believe it or not, guys. Uh, we did our first call yesterday and we went like three quarters of an hour and found out that it didn't even go live and didn't even record. So that's how kick-ass Kira is. She did and signed up for this again a second time and did this all over again a second time. That's how committed she is. And that's why you're winning Kira. So again, appreciate your time and appreciate you sharing your story today. Happy to. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for being with us. Again, this is Doran Aldana from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast from MortgageMarketingCoach.com with the one and only beautiful kick-ass Kira Truitt. And if, again, you want to find out how you can go from where you are to where you want to be and create a true, magnificent breakthrough in your business, working smarter, not harder, book a call with us, MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. So guys, thanks for being with us. Go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action and go forth, engage. Let's create that dream. Let's make it real. Chances are you'll get massive results. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for being with us. Peace.